Okay, to get started with a baked spinach ravioli skillet, this recipe calls for you to bake it in a skillet that actually can go in the oven. I don't have a skillet like that, so what I'm doing is I'm gonna go ahead and start the recipe in this skillet. I'm gonna transfer it into a nine by 13 grease dish and then bake it in the oven. And when we do put it in the oven, it will be on broil. However, because it's a glass dish, I don't feel comfortable putting it under broil. So I'm putting it on 400 degrees until the cheese melts. So here we go. This is four tablespoons of butter. We're gonna melt that. Ooh, that's hot. Let's go ahead and melt that a little bit. Listen to that butter sizzling. Everything's better with butter, isn't it? Okay, and to this, we're gonna go ahead and add a third cup of onions. Ooh. <laughs> my finger hit the, my finger hit the edge of the skillet. Be careful when you're in the oven. I mean, in the kitchen. Okay, and now here, this is, uh, ow. Two cloves of garlic. And then the recipe calls for two sprigs of rosemary. However, I don't have fresh rosemary, so I can use dried rosemary, and I am putting in two teaspoons of rosemary. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and cook this down until, oh, look at all that butter. Um, we're gonna go ahead and saute this until the onions are uh, translucent. Oh my gosh, it already smells good, you guys. Okay, next we're gonna go ahead and put in a quarter cup of flour. And we're gonna stir that for a couple of minutes. Stir that. Guys, this smells so good already. Yummy. And you want to make sure, and I've said this in other recipes or videos, you want to make sure that you cook your flour down because you don't want your food tasting like flour, raw flour. Mm. If you could only smell it, it smells delicious. Okay, now to this. I think we've gotten the flour all incorporated with the butter and um, the other stuff. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put in two cups of water. Okay. Stir this around. Make sure that you get the edges of the pan. And then make sure that you get the bits on the bottom of the pan also. That's where all the flavor is. Alrighty. I'm gonna just stir this around a little bit more. And we're gonna go ahead. It says that you put, I'm gonna link the recipe down below so uh, for exact measurements. I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle actually some salt in it. It's like half a teaspoon of salt that you need. And then some pepper. We don't want it too peppery. So we're just gonna add a little bit of pepper. Okay, stir that around a little bit. I might wanna turn up the heat just a little bit. Okay. Get that all incorporated. And now we are going to add milk to the dish. We're adding two cups of milk. So we're basically making like an Alfredo sauce. Except my Alfredo sauce, to be honest with you, has way more butter than that, but this does look good. Okay, so you're gonna let that cook through. All right, at this point, um, the sauce is starting to boil. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it down on simmer. 
All right, let me stir this around it just a couple more minutes. And then I will add the ravioli. The ravioli that we're using is Celentano, the beef ravioli. Now the recipe did call for 18 ounces, but this bag is 22 ounces and I don't think it really matters that it's that much. We're gonna gently toss those in and let the ravioli cook while it's simmering. Okay. Go ahead, coat those. Alrighty. So this is gonna cook and simmer for five to seven minutes. Hey guys, while this was simmering, I tasted the sauce and quite honestly, there was not enough salt or pepper in the sauce. And um, so I am i don't like my food too salty, but it definitely needed some more uh, salt. So what I did is I added an equivalent. I added some kosher salt. So I probably added an equivalent to maybe half a tablespoon of kosher salt. Then I added some um, some more black pepper. And the black pepper, I would say, was probably another teaspoon of black pepper. I tasted it, it was tasting better, but I thought, you know what, it needs a little bit more garlic. So I added about a, maybe half a tablespoon of garlic powder to it. And I added another teaspoon of onion powder to it. Actually, we have put in the, the fresh garlic but I added um, another teaspoon of garlic powder. So at this point, what we're doing is we've turned off the heat. I'm gonna transfer it into my pan. Now, normally, again, like I said at the beginning, you take your pan, an oven-proof skillet, and you just stick it in the oven after I do these couple, these next couple of steps. However, because I don't have enough an oven-proof skillet, I'm transferring it into a glass dish. So I'm gonna transfer that, and then I'll show you the next steps. Okay, so I've transferred it into the casserole dish, and now we're gonna add our spinach. And what I'm gonna do is, this is frozen spinach. It's one of those boxes of frozen spinach. I think it's like, I don't know how many ounces, maybe 10 ounces. And uh, you have to make sure that you get all of the liquid out. So you place it in a tea towel, and you wring it so that it's dry. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and place all the spinach in here. So in this dish, basically you've got, you know, your food groups, you've got your uh, starches or your, you know, the pasta, you've got the meat from the ravioli, inside the ravioli, you have your um, dairy, and then you also have your spinach, and we're gonna add some cheese. So at this point, let me just stir this in, incorporate it into it. I think once it bakes up, it's gonna be really, really good. Now the recipe also called for, um, I think two ounces of mozzarella cubed. And this is the first time I'm trying this recipe. So I'm following the recipe as closely as I possibly can other than the seasonings. However, in the future, what I think I would do is I would probably get a bag of um, mozzarella cheese, shredded mozzarella cheese, and I would probably include that in this. So here we go, here's two ounces of mozzarella, and I'll just randomly place it in here. I'm thinking because they were gonna have it under the broiler, that this was probably gonna be like broiled, but oh well. And then what you're also gonna do is you're gonna add some mozzarella cheese, oh, excuse me, Parmesan cheese. So I'm sprinkling that on top. All right, and with this dish, I think you could probably serve it with a salad or you could serve it with green beans. Get your greens in. All righty, it's looking good. And I'm sure now with the little added spices or seasonings, it'll be delicious. Okay, so normally this would broil for five minutes. However, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in until the top gets a little browned on 400 degrees. So I'm gonna check it after maybe 10 or 15 minutes and see how we're doing. All right, what I did is I cooked it for 15 minutes in the oven 
and it was just bubbling up, but it wasn't browning. So I went ahead and I did do broil for five minutes and it browned a little bit. It bubbled a lot and it browned a little bit on the top. It looks really, really good. All right, I'm gonna let it sit for about five minutes and then I'll plate it up. Okay guys, here's the final product and it looks delicious and it smells delicious. What I did is I added, I sprinkled a little bit more Parmesan cheese on the top, but here you go, baked spinach ravioli for dinner.